Ladies and gentlemen, if you could open your Bible with me to 1 Kings 8, our scripture of the day. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands toward heaven and said, O Lord, God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth beneath keeping covenant and showing steadfast love to your servants who walk before you with all their heart. You have kept with your servant David, my father, what you declared to him. You spoke with your mouth and with your hand and fulfilled it this day. Now therefore, O Lord, God of Israel, keep for your servant David, my father, what you have promised him, saying you shall not lack a man to sit before me on the throne of Israel. If only your sons pay close attention to their way, to walk before me as you have walked before me. Now therefore, O God of Israel, let your word be confirmed. So I got to read the scripture of the day live with hundreds of friends, from my church family, and we did it right here in the revival room. It was because it was Labor Day, and so all the laborers came to go out because the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Well, they weren't so few here today. I was so encouraged to see hundreds of people from our church going out with the good news of Jesus, because any day you're sharing the good news, that's a good day. And I'm encouraged by some of my brothers and sisters who have been going out faithfully for years. And I was even encouraged by some who were willing to go out for the first time in the name of Jesus. And before you go out to share the good news, you gotta have the most important conversation, which is to pray. And so we read Solomon's epic prayer of dedication. Maybe you read it in 1 Kings 8, where he says to God, you gotta hear us in heaven and answer us when we pray towards this place, this temple. Now, today's scripture of the day is 1 Kings 9, and it's like we're getting a construction update. If you've been reading through Kings with us, there's a whole lot of building going on, and you gotta be careful, because when you read about ancient construction projects, you might start thinking this is old news, and it doesn't matter to me. Well, that's not how scripture of the day works because there's treasure in God's word and you gotta dig for it. This isn't just ancient scripture. This is the eternal word of the living God. And so yes, the building is a key theme in Kings and especially in the reign of Solomon. And here in 1 Kings 9, the Hebrew word bana and to build is actually used many different times because God sees what Solomon is building and God now comes to talk to Solomon and he says, I've heard your prayer and your plea which you have made before me. I have consecrated this house that you have built. How amazing that Solomon prays to dedicate the temple in 1 Kings 8 and then in today's scripture of the day, 1 Kings 9, God shows up and says, I heard your prayer. That to me is such an inspiring concept that we can say something down here on earth and God will hear us in heaven. And so that's what's happening here in 1 Kings 9 is God saying what you built matters and I'm hearing you in heaven. And as you go through 1 Kings 9, and this is why you should never think the temple is old news, right? Now, I understand that Jesus said that destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. And he was referring to the temple of his body. So as new covenant believers in Jesus, we don't need to go through the temple and the old covenant. Uh, Jesus is our way to the Father, right? And so I understand that, but what I'm concerned is that therefore, a lot of our fellow believers today, we kind of discount the way of God that he interacted with the people of Israel through the temple. But listen to what God says to Solomon. This is what God says when he says, hey Solomon, I heard you. Hey, hey Solomon, I see what you've built. God says, which you have made before me, I have consecrated this house that you have built by putting my name there forever. My eyes and my heart will be there for all time. 
Now, I got to think when God says forever, and then he follows it up with for all time, I think God knows how language works. I think God knows exactly what he's saying. I think that God is actually saying that what Solomon has built will always be relevant, will always matter. Like that place, the temple is still there to this very day. That place, it, I mean, yeah, there's been a lot of history on top of it since Solomon built it, but you go to that place, the temple, that's still a significant place. And that's what I hear God saying here. I don't think God is done with his promises to the people of Israel. I think God has a future plan for what's even going to happen at the temple because God's looking at that place forever, for all time. That's why I feel like a lot of people today, they do discount scriptures like the book of Kings. And I'm so thankful that you're here reading through Kings with me and saying, this isn't uh, some old news. No, this is God's word. And I want to hear what God says. And it doesn't seem like God's saying the temple's only relevant for a limited amount of time. It seems like God's saying the temple is where he's always going to be paying attention. And that maybe there's even a future for the temple from our day. In fact, you don't have to read much of the Bible to know, isn't the Antichrist gonna commit the abomination of desolation in the temple during the tribulation? That sounds pretty relevant for the future. Isn't Jesus gonna come back on the Mount of Olives and set up his reign in Jerusalem uh, for a thousand years? That sounds pretty relevant for the temple. So what Solomon builds here, that David wanted to build, that Solomon fulfills, all because God said he would. This is very significant, and I'm glad we're reading it. I gotta tell you, when we talked about Solomon asking for wisdom in our last video, so many of you left comments about wisdom verses. You guys really encouraged me. And I want you to leave comments on this video too. And I want you to leave a comment about a verse that inspires you to pray because that's what God is saying to Solomon here in 1 Kings 9. Not only that he sees the temple that Solomon built, but that he heard Solomon's prayer. And Solomon's prayer in 1 Kings 8 that we got to read live here together on Labor Day, uh, this prayer is worthy of your consideration. So I do wanna refer back to chapter eight because even though we've been getting a lot of physical details about the construction that Solomon's been building, Solomon's prayer takes over the chapter. It's clearly the centerpiece, it really of this whole section about Solomon's building projects, Solomon's prayer really kind of stands out in this whole section of scripture. And it's important that you see that Solomon's prayer is exemplary. And, and here's what it does. It picks up on previous scripture and it pushes towards even future scripture. Okay, so there's a, the key part of Solomon's prayer. First of all, when you read his prayer, he has a very high view of God. Solomon understands who he's talking to. God's glory has filled the temple. And Solomon's talking about a God who is high in heaven. Even, even the heavens can't contain God, much less this little building that I've built. Solomon has a very transcendent view of God, and yet he thinks that God has a covenant with his people, that God has steadfast love for his people, and that God is gonna keep his word to his people. He thinks there's an intimacy between God and his people. So this is the way you wanna think about God when you pray. You wanna think about our Father, intimate. You can talk to him, he's your Father. In heaven, transcendent, beyond us. Solomon's got all of this. And he asked God to hear them whenever they pray towards this temple. So that's why it's so important that God says, yes, I'm paying attention towards the temple because that's where Solomon said, when we pray towards this temple, you need to hear us. So it's not just about the place or the structure, it's about God having a relationship with his people. And so hear us from heaven. And then Solomon gives, I don't know if you ever counted them or gone through them, he gives seven different scenarios and they all start with if or when your people pray. For example, if it's not raining because the people have sinned and then the people turn to pray, acknowledging their sin, 
Will you then hear them from heaven, forgive them their sin, and bring back the rain to water the earth? That's just one of the seven different scenarios. Now, Solomon's not just creating his own way to pray here. Solomon is inspired to pray even these specific seven things from what God has already said in his law. A couple of cross references you should really look at to go along with this section of 1 Kings is Leviticus chapter 26 is a passage I would want you to go to, particularly verses 40 to 45. And then also Deuteronomy, the second telling of the law, talks about it in Deuteronomy 31 to 10. And so you can see that God's already talked about, hey, if you guys obey me, there'll be blessings. If you disobey me, there'll be curses. And, and when these curses happen, you need to turn back to me. And now Solomon's saying, yeah, and when they turn back to you, they'll focus on praying towards the temple, and that's where you're gonna hear your people. So Solomon, he's praying inspired by the scripture. This is where we're gonna find power in our prayer is when we pray God's words back to him. I'll tell you what, my kids, when they say, dad, you said, and they, my kids know, my kids are old enough now, they know this, they're on to me, right? Because sometimes I say, yeah, we should do this, or yeah, we should do that. And my kids, they remember what I say, and then when they quote it back to me, what, what do I, they got me, right? Oh uh, yeah, I said we're gonna go there. All right, let's get in the car, let's go. I mean, what am I supposed to say? Because I said it, they remembered it, they say it back to me. I, I'm a father, I love my kids. Let's do it, okay, that's what I said. See, that's what we're doing with our Father in heaven. Hey, you said this, you promised this. You said this would happen, right? I mean, one of the prayers that I've been praying now for over 10 years, specifically about Huntington Beach, is Jesus said he would build his church, and Father, I'm asking you to do it here in Huntington Beach. And so you just take what God says and you pray it back to him. That's what Solomon's doing. That's what all of God's people throughout history. See, this is what I love, not just reading the scripture of the day, but the scripture of the day inspires me in what I'm going to pray. In fact, sometimes I'll even on my little iPad, I'll copy a section from the scripture of the day, paste it right into this note on my iPad and start typing out a prayer based on what I read from God's word, what God said. God, you said this. Now I'm asking you to do it. If you're not feeling power in your prayer, it's because you're not repeating your father's words back to him. And so Solomon is doing this from Leviticus 26, from Deuteronomy 30, and then guess what? Other saints, other of God's people are gonna pray towards the temple just like Solomon says here. Daniel 9 will bring fire to your prayer life. And so Daniel chapter 9 is definitely something you should read. And Daniel, you know, he prayed three times a day out his window. And where was his window facing? Towards the temple, because he's following what Solomon said. And Daniel is even reading the prophet Jeremiah, who prophesied 70 years of exile. And when Daniel reads that, he's like, wait a minute, we're coming towards the end of that time. I should ask God to do what he said. And so Daniel 9 is the ultimate prayer inspired by scripture of the day. How about Nehemiah 1, where when Nehemiah hears that the walls haven't even been rebuilt in Jerusalem, he knows he needs to pray about God's people going back and being restored in the city, just like God said. And so I hope that this example of prayer will inspire you to take some of the things that God says and pray those things back to him. Uh, that there is real power in your prayers when you know you're praying God's word when you know God hears you. And today the way that God hears us isn't because we're facing towards the temple. It's because we're praying in the name of Jesus. And, and it's very clear that if we ask God anything in Jesus' name, he will do it. We have full access to the throne of God in heaven above because Jesus, Jesus, I mean, he's our temple, he's our priest, he's our sacrifice. Jesus fulfilled all of the law so that you and I now can talk to our Father in heaven today. 
and we can pray. So I want to hear from you. What are the verses that inspire you to pray? And I hope that when you're done watching this video, you'll be like, wait a minute. In 1 Kings 9, God shows up and he tells Solomon, I heard you. Whew. What an amazing thing that right when this video is done, you could pray to God in heaven and he would hear you today and he would answer you here on earth. And he will do exactly what you say when you pray because what you say when you pray is what God already said he would do in the scripture of the day. So I don't know about you, but I'm inspired to go pray right now. And we're still in the good days of Solomon where he's building the temple, building up the kingdom. By the time I see you for more here on Scripture of the Day, Solomon will have turned to evil and we're gonna get to kind of the theme of kings, which is a succession of evil kings. And what should people like us do when there's so much evil around us, evil in our government. Man, I hope you'll keep reading Kings with me. I hope to see you this weekend as church as we continue our study through Romans 12. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. We'll celebrate 10 years, a decade, of Jesus building his church here in Huntington Beach. You know, I gotta share with you one of my memories from 10 years ago, right when I moved to Huntington Beach. Uh, when I moved to Huntington Beach, I, I moved up here from down in Aliso Viejo where Compass Bible Church was down there, where I was the high school pastor. And on my last service down there, I wore like a graduation gown, like I was graduating high school to go to Huntington Beach. And what they did, uh, the students, is they decorated my car like someone who had just graduated. You know, where they get those markers and they put them all over your car. And I felt so embarrassed driving my car down the 405 up here to Huntington Beach. And so basically, for all that I did back in that high school ministry at Compass Aliso, they basically gave me the gift of a hundred dollar car wash because that's what it costs to get all that stuff off of my car. And so I was sitting at that car wash. It's the car wash right there on Beach and Garfield. And I was sitting at that car wash and I'm like, okay, so I've learned how to work with the high schoolers, but now I'm here to plant a church. I have no idea how to plant a church. How do you start something that doesn't exist? How do you see something get built up uh, when there's nothing there? And I just remember sitting at that car wash saying, God, I don't know how to build a church, but Jesus said he was gonna do it right here. And I'm asking Jesus to do it in Huntington Beach. And look what Jesus has done. See, that's what happens when you pray. But, uh, the gospel rang out. It was awesome. Uh, I would say that uh, we had some doors that weren't open, but we had some doors that were open. This is my first time. For me and some of the bros right here, including Matt Shu, we went out. We got to share the gospel with people. We got to share the good news of how to be saved. And yeah, the Lord willing, we'll see some people at church this weekend. We had two great conversations. Uh, one guy is kind of angry about churches, not. Uh, preaching repentance, faith, and belief, you know, so we got to go over that, and he's like, really, your church talks about sin and judgment? I'm like, absolutely, you got to stop by Saturday night at 5 p.m. <laughs> we were able to have a conversation with a lady who is used to seeing our ice cream truck, and she's really excited um, about us coming through her neighborhood again, and she said that she's actually looking for a church, and we had our children with us, and she has a fifth grader with her, and so our girls were just telling them about how we have a 56 event coming up, and the mom sounded really excited about that, and they're gonna come check out our church, praise the Lord. If you guys can be praying for Elaine, we got to talk to this woman who is very friendly, very kind, and uh, it was just a great conversation that we were able to have with her, try to talk to her about when she really first believed and had faith, and she seemed very open to checking out our church, but if you could be praying for her, uh, that's what I'm gonna be doing, because this lady, we just had a great time together.